Hi, welcome to our short videos on Ask the Expert, where we take up the most trending or searched query online pertaining to the cybersecurity industry. We also take up questions asked by our viewers and clients relating to topics relevant to the cybersecurity industry. Most of these questions that we take up are posted on our YouTube channel that you can see on your screen. Do subscribe to our channel, which is a treasure trove of information on various industry standards, compliance and governance, and various cybersecurity pertaining information. You can see the link on the screen and read the description below to learn more about it. Do subscribe and click on the bell icon so you get notified about our latest video updates. Today, we have taken up the most searched query that are doing rounds in the payment card industry by merchants and various service providers. With the release of the latest PCI DSS 4.0 version, people are still not clear about the updates and the changes introduced in the latest version. So, to simplify it for our viewers, we decided to conduct a series of videos on PCI DSS requirements 3.2.1 versus 4.0, explaining the updates and changes introduced in each of the PCI DSS requirements. So, today's expert video is on PCI DSS requirement 1, summary of changes from version 3.2.1 to 4.4, explained. PCI DSS requirement general description. So before heading straight to the differences, let us first understand the fact that the primary objective of PCI DSS still stands to be the same. So the security controls and processes for PCI DSS requirements, that is both 3.2.1 and 4.0 given below are still the same. That is one, building and maintaining secure network and systems. 2. Protect cardholder data. 3. Maintain a vulnerability management program. 4. Implement strong access control measures. 5. Regularly monitor and test networks. 6. Maintain an information security policy. Moving on, let us understand the general description of changes introduced in the PCI DSS 4.0 version. Talking about the PCI requirement 1 of PCI DSS 3.2.1, it primarily focused on firewalls and router configurations. However, the updated version of PCI DSS 4.0 reflects and focuses on network security controls and so it has replaced firewalls and routers with network security controls. This is mainly to support a broad range of technologies to meet the security objectives traditionally met by the firewalls. Now, let us understand the changes introduced in each of the sub-requirements listed in the PCI DSS 4.0 requirement 1. First, the requirement 1.1.5 of PCI DSS 3.2.1 is now replaced by the requirement 1.1.2 of PCI DSS 4.0. So, the former requirement which is the description of groups, roles and responsibilities for management of network components has now been replaced with the general requirements of roles and responsibilities for requirement 1 of PCI DSS 4.0. Basically, in the latest version, the requirement is now more specific and detailed with requirements of de uh, defining and understanding the roles and responsibilities and having the need for documenting the same as mentioned in the requirement 1.1.2. The updated version also provides guidance in terms of mentioning good practices under 1.1.2 requirement of the PCI DSS 4.0 version. The updated version requires that the roles and responsibilities are well defined and documented within the policies and procedures or maintained within separate documents. Further, as a best practice and as a part of communicating roles and responsibilities, entities must also consider taking acknowledgement from personnel, their acceptance and understanding of their assigned roles and responsibilities. Moving on to the PCI DSS requirement 1.1 of version 3.2.1 is now replaced with the requirement 1.2.1 
of PCIDS's 4.0 version. Basically, in the former version of PCI requirement, it talked about establishing and implementing firewalls and router configuration standards. However, now the scope has been broadened to include a range of technologies to meet the configuration standards for network security control rules set. The requirement is now more specific and detailed with requirements of defining, implementing and maintaining configuration standards for network security controls. The updated version provides guidance in terms of mentioning good practices under this requirement. Further to this, vendor can work on a customized approach in a way that network security controls are configured and operated are defined and consistently upright. Moving on to the PCI-DSS requirement 1.1.1 of version 3.2.1 is now replaced with the requirements of 1.2.2 of version PCI-DSS 4.0. The former requirement focused on the process for approving and testing all network connections and changes to the firewall and router configurations. However, in the new version 4.0, the requirement 1.2.2 covers a broad scope in terms of all changes to network connections and configurations of network security controls approved and managed in accordance with the change control process defined in the requirement 6.5.1 of version 4.0. The requirement 6.5.1 of version 4.0 talks about change management procedure which includes the addition, removal or modification of any system components in the production environment and further documentation of changes in the environment. The requirement further includes the need of documenting the impacts of the change to the affected parties. This is to facilitate appropriate plans for any processing changes. The latest requirements cover a broad aspect of technology affecting the network connections and the change control processes that are much more detailed. They have further highlighted good practices for better guidance and implementation as seen in the below image. Now, moving on to the next requirement, which is the requirement 1.1.4 of version 3.2.1 of PCI-DSS, which was requirements for a firewall at each internet connection and between any demilitarized zone and the internal network zone has now been removed as a redundant requirement in PCI-DSS 4.0 version. PCI-DSS requirement 1.1.6 of the version 3.2.1 was documentation of business justification and approval for use of all services, protocols and ports allowed, including documentation of security features implemented for those protocols considered to be insecure. They are now two separate set of requirements in the latest version of 4.0 PCI-DSS version. The requirements are now separated in two different requirements, namely requirement 1.2.5 and 1.2.6 of version 4.0. This is to clarify the intent of each requirement and provide details on good practices that makes each of these requirements more achievable. While the PCI-DSS 4.0 version requirement 1.2.5 talks about all service protocols and ports allowed that are identified, approved and have a defined business need. The requirement 1.2.6 on the other hand talks about security features defined and implemented for all service protocols and ports that are in use and considered to be insecure such as that the risk is mitigated. PCI-DSS 4.0 provides detailed description of each requirement and further states good practices to implement both the requirements accordingly. The next requirement, which is requirement 1.1.7 of PCI-DSS 3.2.1, talks about firewalls and router rule sets at at least every six months. 
the requirement 1.2.7 of the PCA DSS 4.0 version covers the same requirement but in detail, clarifying the intent of reviewing all configurations of network security controls at least once every six months. Here, the requirement also talks about adopting and implementing good practices in detail to achieve the mentioned requirement. This includes using manual, automated or system-based methods of re reviewing, confirming that all permitted accesses are justified and any discrepancies or uncertainties about a rule or configuration should be addressed. Further, the method of review should confirm appropriate management of traffic rules and match the approved configuration. The PCA DSS 4.0 version also states that organizations with a high volume of change to their network configuration must perform reviews more frequently. This is to ensure that the configuration continues to meet the requirements in the long run. The next requirement, which is 1.2 of the version 3.2.1, talks about building firewalls and router configurations that restrict connection between untrusted network and any system components in the cardholder data environment. This is now removed as null requirement in the latest version of PCI DSS 4.0 version. The next one, which is requirement 1.2.2 of PCI DSS 3.2.1, talks about secure and synchronized router configuration files. The requirement 1.2.8 of PCI DSS 4.0 version covers the same requirement, but in detail clarifying the intent of securing configuration files. The updated requirement mentions about keeping configuration information current and secure to prevent unauthorized changes and to ensure that the configuration is in accordance with all the elements specified in the requirement. Now, requirement 1.2.1 of PCA DSS 3.2.1 talks about restrict inbound and outbound traffic to that which is necessary for the cardholder data environment and specifically deny all other traffic. This requirement is now split into two different requirements in the latest version of PCA DSS 4.0. The separation of the two requirements was done with an intention to provide clarity in intent, especially in detail for each of the requirements. The requirement 1.2.1 of the version 3.2.1 is split into two separate requirements, namely requirement 1.3.1 and 1.3.2 of version PCI DSS 4.0. So, PCA DSS 4.0 requirement speaks about restricting inbound traffic to only that that is necessary and denying the rest is established to prevent any malicious individuals from accessing the entity's network via unauthorized IP addresses or from using services, protocols or ports in an unauthorized manner. Whereas, in the requirement 1.3.2, it speaks about restricting outbound traffic from the card data environment to only that which is necessary and denying the rest. This is to prevent any malicious individuals and compromised systems components within the entity's network from communicating with any external untrusted host. The former requirement 1.2.3 of PCI DSS 3.2.1 version is about installing parameter firewalls between all wireless network and the cardholder data environment and configure these firewalls to deny traffic or if necessary for business purpose permit only authorized traffic between wireless environment and the cardholder data environment. The requirement 1.3.3 of the latest version of PCI DSS 4.0 covers the same. However, clarifying the intent of implementing network security controls between wireless network and the cardholder data environment in a detailed manner. 
the intention is to prevent unauthorized access to the wireless network that connects to the cardholder data environment and that which may result in compromise of account information. Evaluating the configuration setting and network diagrams to verify that the network security controls are implemented between all wireless networks and the cardholder data environment in accordance with all the elements specified in this requirement is essential. This is mainly to restrict any unauthorized traffic into the network. Moving on, requirement 1.3 of PCI DSS 3.2.1 talks about prohibiting direct public access between the internet and any system component in the cardholder data environment. The requirement 1.4.1 of PCI DSS 4.0 refocuses and covers the same requirement, but in detail clarifying the intent to implement measures to control access between trusted and untrusted network. The intention is to restrict unauthorized traffic and compromise of network and data. Requirement 1.3.1, 1.3.2 and 1.3.5 of the former version of PCI DSS 3.2.1 talked about implementing demilitarized zone to limit inbound traffic limit inbound internet traffic to IP address within the demilitarized zone and permit only established connection into the network. In the latest PCI DSS 4.0 version, the above mentioned requirements have all been merged into a single requirement, which is the 1.4.2 requirement of version 4.0 of PCI DSS. The intent to merge the requirements is to restrict inbound traffic from untrusted network and prevent or reduce the risk of system components being exposed to untrusted network. The requirement details good practices and guidance in terms of implementing measures, evaluating and verifying configurations of network security controls for secure inbound and outbound traffic. Moving on to the requirement 1.3.6 of PCI DSS 3.2.1, which talks about place system components that store cardholder data in an internal network zone segregated from the demilitarized zone and other untrusted network. The requirement 1.14.4 of PCI DSS 4.0 covers the same requirement However, clarifying the intent that system components that store cardholder data are not directly accessible from untrusted network. This is done to ensure that system components that store cardholder data is only be directly accessed from trusted network. This prevents unauthorized network traffic from reaching the system components. For this, it requires examining the data flow diagram and network diagram to verify that it is documented and that configuration of network security controls are implemented such that system components storing the card data are not directly accessible from the untrusted network. Moving on to the requirement 1.4 of the PCI DSS version 3.2.1 talks about installing personal firewall software or equivalent functionality on any portable computing devices that connect to the internet when outside the network and which are also used to access the cardholder data environment. However, the latest version of PCI DSS 4.0 covers the same requirement but under the requirement 1.5.1 clarifying the intent to implement security controls on any computing devices that connects to both untrusted network and the card holder data environment. This clearly states the intent that the implementing network security controls at every connection coming into and out of the trusted network allows monitoring and controlled access that minimizes the chances of malicious individuals gaining access to the internal network via an unprotected connection. So this way, unauthorized traffic cannot cross the network boundaries between trusted and untrusted network. 
thereby securing the network and sensitive data in the cardholder data environment. With this, we end our informative session on PCI DSS Requirement 1, Summary of Changes from Version 3.2.1 to 4.0 Explained. Hope this video turned out to be useful to you and cleared most of your doubts. To learn more about the changes in the other requirements, stay tuned for the rest of the series explaining the changes in PCI DSS requirements in the upcoming expert videos. We will be next covering a session on PCI DSS Requirement 2, Summary of Changes from Version 3.2.1 to 4.0. That said, we also recommend our viewers to share their feedback with us and help us make the videos more useful to you. If you have any queries pertaining to the changes in the PCI DSS requirement 4.0 version, then do drop us a mail on askus at vistainfosec.com and we'd be more than happy to help you. Until then, thank you.